Hi, this is McKenna. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. I'm Paul. It's great to meet you. It's a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Paul. <laughs> you know what? I'm, I'm like getting caught up on and getting ready for today. And I'm watching you cross all these massive platforms. And you taking the time to talk to a little old radio station in Minneapolis means a lot. Thank you. Oh, please. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Heck yeah. Well, uh, you know what? Huge fan of this uh, this song that you've uh, got out there in the world for us, and it, just as big a fan of of all of the work you've done on screen as well. And that's where I found the song. It was you know me and the family are at Ghostbusters Afterlife, and this song drops at the end, and I'm like, what is this? And we went and looked it up. We got home, and it was like, oh, okay. And through preparing for this whole thing, I've come to realize just like how big of a fan I am of you. Oh my goodness! Thank you. That's so nice. Well, it, it's 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 from the heart. It's it's sincere, and and I tr- and truly, I didn't realize that. Like you've been in some of my favorite films and worked with some of my favorite people. Like I Tanya, uh, Paul Walter Hauser is one of my favorite actors on the planet. Dude's unbelievable. Uh, you were in Designated Survivor uh, and Kiefer. Oh my God! I mean, it's Kiefer Sutherland for the love oh of God. God. Uh, Captain Marvel, Brie Larson, and then of course, I don't know. There's a couple few people that are pretty amazing that were in this Ghostbusters Afterlife thing you got going on. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's kind of crazy because growing up, I've been doing this for so many years now, and I've been so little working with all these <laughs> like legends, and I had no clue. So it's like I worked for with Kiefer for like three years, and yeah. then as soon as I'm off of that show, I watch The Lost Boys and become like, oh my gosh, wait, how did I never know? And it's the same with um, Mr. Paul Rudd and Ghostbusters. I ended up accidentally watching like four movies that had him in it while I was shooting Ghostbusters. So it's so weird. But now that I'm older, I can kind of appreciate just how cool it's been. For sure. And you, uh, you've you grown up, I mean, fast. Holy cow. I, I mean, looking at your acting resume was, I mean, it's mind-blowing. You've been incredibly busy for somebody that, you know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to, you know, discount your age or whatever, that somebody that's only 15. But seriously, you've been on the planet 15 years. You've done a lot. Holy smokes. <laughs> I mean, it, it has been a little bit crazy, but yeah. it's been really fun. I, I, it's always been something that I've loved, so that's good. How did it start? Like, you know, and, and we'll get into music because I'm we're a music station, and I'm super excited about this song. But it, it's you know, we obviously need the acting for for context because it's all makes up who you are. You know, um, how did it all start? Especially at such a young age. Um, I- I've always had like a story but at this point I'm just like honestly how did I end, like, <laughs> end up out here in LA like I have the story but it's like anytime I get asked this now I'm just like honestly how <laughs> it's so weird because looking back it was all just kind of a game of luck at the very beginning I mean all I worked really really hard to be where I am now but when right. we first came out to LA we just kind of like we're out here for a random audition because somehow I had been lucky enough to like get into a nice acting class back in Texas and find an agent and then lucky enough to just get sent this audition for a Disney XD show in yeah. LA my mom and I were like yeah of course we want to go out to LA because we're like from some small town in Texas or like um <laughs> we want to go out to LA and I was like yeah like I have the be- uh, the Hollywood like Barbie dolls of course I want to go out there and see where they're from <laughs> so like I was stoked and so we went out thinking it would be like a little like I don't know couple day vacation in LA I ended up booking my first ever audition for a TV show and ended up out in LA for the past nine years <laughs> so <laughs> And then somehow my dad, who's an orthopedic surgeon and has been doing residency and medical school for as long as I've been alive, ended up making it into a residency program out in L.A. Just He applied to one of them just in case he could get in so that he could move out to L.A. with us and stop flying back and forth. And out of... a I don't know, maybe a thousand people or a couple hundred. He made it into the top two people and the only two people that made it into the residency. So our whole family moved out here and we've just kind of been figuring it out ever since. It's just, it's crazy how 
things work. You know what I mean? You just think of the, no. the big picture and you think of how massive our country is. Then you think about how massive the planet is and, and then the universe and, and how all these things come together to just kind of work out. And it and it's actually kind of funny to hear you. You know, you have this incredibly impressive resume and your dad is obviously pretty impressive at what he does. And, and, it, and you've kind of just been winging it, which is <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. Like it's taken us however long to finally figure out most of this acting world because it's totally different than I mean we just thought that you like you come out here you put your name on a sheet and then you get a job but right. it was the total opposite of that you know right so uh, looking back at how many small things that happened leading up to us being able to stay out here and work to be able to be in these great projects is just kind of crazy because it's like I wonder if that one decision we made or that one thing that happened, if that wouldn't have happened or we would have said something different, I wonder if we'd still be where we are today. So it's you, just – it's crazy, and I'm so incredibly thankful for the way that everything worked out. Heck, yeah, for sure. And you know what? We're thankful, too, because um, in in our <laughs> household, you are – I've got uh, – I'm married with a, a nine- and five-year-old daughters. All right. So that's it's I think I think all the more reason that you have kind of struck a chord with me, because I've like I said, I I went back and looked at, you know, and Ready Player One. I didn't mention that's another one of my favorite movies of all time. Um, (laughs) You you like I didn't real I didn't even realize how big a fan I was because I, you know, like I, Tanya is fantastic. I I just Googled like you in that. I'm like, oh, God, that's her. You have a, a total total side note. You have an incredible ability to morph into said character, you know, like your your publicity shots. And you as Tanya at ages 8 to 12 and you as Phoebe are three different people as far as I'm concerned. Like, it, you know, and so I, that's what I mean by I didn't even realize how big of a fan I was because I didn't realize that it was you and all these things that I had seen. Anyway, um, so with the kiddos, you're, you're like you're like a legend in the house. All right. Because the nine year olds obsessed with Ghostbusters Afterlife and the whole house is obsessed with uh, with with Haunted House, speaking of. And in fact, uh, I wanted to actually share something really quick with you, if you don't mind. All right, I have a message. I have a message for you from the five-year-old. Her name is Evan. Okay, and I'll tr- I'll translate. Here you go. Thank you for making the haunted house song, and I dance to it every day. So she said, "Thank you for making the haunted house song. I dance to it every day." You're gonna make me cry. That is like the sweetest thing I've ever heard. And it, like whenever you. Like pour pour your heart into a project and create music that's just like, you know, it's so exciting but nerve wracking to put it out in the world. But then For to sure. hear that people are actually listening to it and actually appreciate it and like it, and just that like, I don't know that you listen to it with your little girl and that she likes the song. That's just so mind boggling to me and just so sweet. Well, I'm, and I'm not trying. I'm not trying to overwhelm you and make you uncomfortable, but you. It really no. does. It really does strike a chord because I'm. I'm old man. Like I'm. I'm 48 year old Midwest dad guy. Um, and, and she's five. And when she says she dances to it every day, it's not hyperbole or uh or exaggeration. It's it's you and Olivia Rodrigo and Blackpink <laughs> every single day. There is a dance show. Daddy, can I <laughs> dance? To, and and Haunted House has made it into rotation. So Veal. Feel very honored because it's a it's a tough nut to crack. <laughs> um, and oh my god, it's it's the best, right? Um, okay, uh, I have, and the nine year old also wanted to ask you a question. Can I play that for you? <laughs> Absolutely. All right, here you, here you go. Hi, I'm Elsie, and I want to ask you: Did you make up Phoebe's jokes in Ghostbusters, or did someone write them down for you to say? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Was she asking if I made the jokes? If, yeah, if you came Ghost up with the jokes or if they were written, yeah. That is such a good question because I did come up with the jokes. You're kidding me. That was me. Yep, that was me. I came on the set every day with a joke book, and I'd prepare, like, a list of jokes for the day, and I'd just tell them all. And then I'd be like, so, Mr. Jason, our director, and I'd be like, these are my personal favorites, but, you know, do what you will with these jokes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what. I have, uh, yeah, I have to come clean. I, uh, I, I don't know what I owe you, owe you in royalties, but I've been ripping these jokes off for weeks because they're actually <laughs> really freaking funny. The grasshopper bit is great. The dead polar bear is fantastic. Now I can't. I, I have to say, Phoebe's got a way better delivery than I do. But 
the the hamster and a cigarette joke is legitimately one of the funniest things I've ever heard. Thank you. That one was so fun to tell. Let me, like that one was great. That one was uh, definitely one of my favorites. So like, fantastic. Usually, I tell a joke and then I tell a new joke every single take. But the hamster and a cigarette one, I probably told that on the third take, and Jason was like, "No, do that joke for the rest of the time that we're shooting this scene." <laughs> It's so good. Oh, it's so great. Um, okay, finally the music. Uh, uh, wh- where did Haunted House come from? Because if I understand correctly, Haunted House, like the concept of it anyway, came before Ghostbusters, and the two are completely unrelated. Where you could actually make it, you know, you could if somebody coming into the the thing cold, they could just I- infer that that it was written for the movie because it, you know, obviously the two go hand in hand, kind of. But from what I understand, you wrote it completely. Uh, independent of. Yeah, I did, which is kind of crazy. I mean, I had already done Ghostbusters, but Ghostbusters wasn't even really in my mind whenever I was writing that song. It's just kind of based off of some personal experiences I went through over the past however long we've been in a global pandemic now. But that's just kind of based off of not one, but like a couple things that went on in my life. And afterwards, sitting back, I did not even think about Ghostbusters. Still, we just randomly came up with the line, a ghost never leaves a haunted house after writing like two verses and some other stuff. And then it came to us. Um, But I only thought about Ghostbusters because I was like, wait, hey, I wrote this. So I wrote my music video script. Um, I write all my music videos myself. And so I had written this music video treatment. And I was like, who could I? I wonder who could direct this because I really want my music and my music videos to stay professional. And I want them to feel like little short films considering that I'm an actress and I want to be just as involved with music. I don't want to really lean to one side or the other. Both are such important things to me. I, I wanted to be able to make my music videos, any music video I make, of course it's a music video, but I want it to almost feel like a, like a short film, you know? I want it to have a story or some sort of substance behind it. Um, so I was like, who could I get who has, like, impacted my acting life to direct this? And I was like, wait, this is called Haunted House. Why don't I just ask Mr. Jason Reitman to direct it? That'd be insane if he said yes. And if he says no, at least he like looked at my treatment that I wrote because he's such a cool writer, you know? Um, And so I sent it to him and I was like, hey, would you be interested in directing this music video? It would mean a lot to me. And he was like, I'd love to, but I'm so busy for like the next three months. And I was like, oh, I completely understand. Thank you so much for even looking at it, Mr. Jason. I feel honored. (laughs) And then he came back to me and he just called me randomly um, the next day. Uh, And he was like, hey, Kenny, I can't stop listening to your song. My dad really loves it. Josie really loves it. And I was just wondering, you know, I'm going into the editing room today. Uh, you know, no problem. I just wanted to check with you to see if maybe this would be okay. Do you think I could just try and see and throw it in over the end credits and see what it sound like? Like, you know, like, it, it's no big deal, but, like, if you're okay with it, as if I would be like, no, you can't do that. Right. And I was like, um, yes, please. I would love that. That's insane. Please. And it just ended up in there. And only after all of that happened, I sat back and I was like, I kind of wrote a song that's almost as, like, could be used as a summary of, like, the film or something. Like, it just closely, so closely relates to the film, which I found hilarious. I was like, how did this end up happening? Um, It's the universe. It's a random random coincidence. Totally. (laughs) I don't even understand it. Really crazy. Um, Yeah, and I think it's 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 hilarious that he asked you the biggest yes question ever. Like, can we, can yeah. we be okay if I put in the end credits? Would that be all right? Uh, you know what? I was really kind of hoping to launch this on my own. I don't think I could do that. <laughs> you know, I really just want to. Yeah, like, uh, I don't know. Maybe, mm. maybe not. I got to think on like, it. Yeah, get, can I get back to you? Like, give me 48, 72 hours to think about it. That'd be great. Thanks. Yeah, give me two to three business days. Yeah, <laughs> two to three business days. That's great. I love that. Um, and And so... The the video is is fairly creepy, um, and I I think I read that the house that it was in was kind of creepy too. Yeah, yeah, 
Canada um, the house that it was shot in was actually really scary. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember I just, like, was exploring in between, like, some of the stuff while they were setting up. And I was just, like, looking around. I opened this door, and I was like, oh, I wonder what's in here. Why does this door have a lock on the outside of it? I open it. I shut it immediately. There was, like, this long spiraling staircase, like, descending into some dark, spooky, conjuring-like cellar. Mm. And I was like, no. Oh, I think that I'm just going to go and sit and wait and stop exploring. This isn't a good idea. I'm not taking any ghosts home with me today. (laughs) I'm taking any ghosts home with me today. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Uh, So 2021, bananas. 2022, probably going to be just as bananas because I don't know if you've heard, but this Ghostbusters thing is kind of a success. Um, And you know what? Not to pat myself on the back, but and I'm not just telling you this to make you feel good either. Uh, I did my, I, I, I see quite a few movies. I, I have a movie podcast on the side, I, actually, for fun. Um, and uh, I, I notched it into the number one slot for 2021, just for just so you know. Yeah. Not that. Let's go! Not that I'm, a, you know, not that I'm a member of the, not that I'm, not that I'm a member of the Academy or anything like that, but I, you know, I see a few movies. So, you know what? Take that, Spider-Man. All right? <clears throat> right? Yeah. Well, you know what? It's it's one of those things where I kept telling people that anybody that would listen, I'm like, look at this. If if you, I don't care if you saw the old one or not. If you saw 1984, it's going to enhance your experience. It's going to be even more fun. I said, but it doesn't matter. They 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 tell you just enough to make you understand what how that how that this story builds off of that one. And it it I laughed and smiled. I, I honestly I had a smile on my face. I think the entire movie um, until you know there were certain parts obviously that the smile kind of turned to tears, but I don't want to give too much away for those that still haven't seen it. You better get on it because the spoiler alert is going to run out. So the timer on that is running out soon. Um, but uh, but yeah, it just, I just, I, it, I thought it was done. Like that's how you do a reboot in my opinion. And it, that's how you tell a new story for a new generation of people while still kind of tipping your cap to the old story, but not completely leaning on it. You know, you didn't need the, the 1984 story to tell this one, but it certainly adds to the fun and it just uh I kind of got off track but it, it just I found myself smiling and 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 laughing the entire time just having a good time like we're supposed to have when we go to to films right I mean it, it I want a story I want there to be heart I want it to engage me but I also want to have a good time you know what I mean thank you so much yeah I understand completely and I, I think that I mean I didn't see the film for like <laughs> two and a half years until after we shot it because of covid the first time i saw it was like a week before it came out wow so i mean i was so i came into it kind of just watching it as not an actor but as an audience member because it had been so long since i read the script since i acted in the scenes, since i had done anything closely related to it so it was kind of crazy going back in and i completely understand what you mean like i mean i'm i'm probably my biggest well i wouldn't say i'm my biggest critic because there's some pretty harsh critics out there but you know <laughs> ignore I'm them definitely one of them <laughs> So, like, I mean, watching it, watching my films, I'm always harsh on myself, and I can always be hypercritical, but Ghostbusters is, I'm just so proud of it. I'm really, really happy with how it turned out, and I just, I don't know, it makes me so happy to be a part of something like that, because I feel like it is so special. I mean, I am, the original Ghostbusters, I wasn't even alive whenever it came out, but it's still one of my all-time favorite films and it always has been yep so i mean getting to be a part of a franchise that just moved down from generation to generation and it just kind of is timeless is just so cool to me um and being able to be a part of one of the films that might reintroduce it as if ghostbusters ever disappeared but you know it reintroduces a new story to a younger generation which i just think is so cool and i'm absolutely thrilled to be a part of it and i'm so pleased with how it turned out fantastic i love that you know what i've taken up 20 minutes of your day um what so what (laughs) i want to get let you get on with whatever else you have going on um what does 2022 look like for you i think i heard you say something in like a because i'm this is an iheart station and so we aren't affiliated directly with z100 and the jingle ball in new york but i did catch a little piece of a thing that said something you out of your your mouth something about an ep or something I'm releasing an EP this year. Okay. Um, I'm very excited about it. I actually have my um, 
one of my producers and a writer coming over tomorrow and the next day to start finishing up on some of the stuff. Um, Hooray. Super cool. Excellent. Um, I should be making an announcement literally within the next, like, week or couple of days about my next song, which should be really cool. <laughs> All right. So I'm very excited to get more music out there. Good. But, um... Yeah, this year is kind of crazy on music side and acting side. Um, I've got a lot going on. I am going to be going to Toronto, <laughs> I think, at the end of this month. And then to play hockey I... or what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm really excited. I've got some really, really um, cool acting projects lined up. Sorry if you can hear my dog barking. That's quite all right. <laughs> you want someone to play with them. But I've got some really, really awesome things lined up with acting with some incredible people that I cannot wait to get started on. And then, I mean, I should be releasing an EP this year and more music after that. So I really cannot wait because lately I've just been focusing on wrapping up um, the EP and wrapping up the songs. Uh, and I just can't, I'm just like cranking them all out. So I cannot wait to, um, to finish up that and get started on some new songs as well. Yeah. Uh, oh, and I happen to work out really hard for a project that I have um, next year. It's kind of crazy doing a, uh, Kind of a total body transformation this early, not really? in my career, considering that I've um, considering that I've been working for a while now. But this, like early on in my life, I suppose. Yeah. Um, it's exciting. I'm really stoked. I've been, I think, training for it for how many months now? I think three. Uh, so it's kind of crazy. Every day I go and I work out. I have like a strict nutritionist thing. So wow. it's really been fun able to push myself like that it's something that i've never really experienced so it's gonna be cool i'm stoked we're just gonna start i'm gonna start calling you shredded grace instead of mckenna because you're gonna be <laughs> you're just gonna be a shredded beast you know what i mean watch out thank you <laughs> if there's another ghostbusters tv will just show up and she'll be like literally john cena yeah <laughs> you won't even need a proton pack anymore <laughs> oh yeah there you go yeah hey you know what hey a uh, podcast you take the proton pack I got this. I'll just squash. I'll just squash things. You, maybe your Hulk can be Hulk smash. You can be Hulk smash, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, it'll be great. Um, McKenna, thank you so much for the time. I love that you're. I love the energy. You're like you. Just, you are a ball of energy, which is fantastic. And uh, you seem like a really humble, grounded, just regular teen doing her thing that just happens to be incredibly talented. And so I, I wish you <laughs> and your family. Uh, nothing but the best uh, in the years to come, and I can't wait to see you uh, shredded, and I can't wait to hear you on uh, some new new stuff down the road, et cetera, et cetera. Just continued success. Thanks for the time. Really, really enjoyed it. And uh, and who knows? Maybe if you get on tour at some point, we'll uh, we'll cross paths someday. <laughs> Thank you so much. And trust me, this was like the best twenty minutes of my day because I've just spent like. <laughs> seven hours at the passport office so this oh. has definitely been a highlight <laughs> that's fantastic i'm so glad that i was i followed that up instead of something really awesome yeah. <laughs> so thank you very much absolutely i enjoyed the conversation thank you again and uh and and you know hopefully like i said hopefully we'll run into each other one day it would be a blast Yes, it would, and thank you so much for having me tell your daughters that I say hello and that I think that they're so cool. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thanks, Phoebe. Or Phoebe. Holy cow, Phoebe. Thank you, McKenna. Holy cow. That was that was a slip. I mean, there you go. If you didn't do your, if you don't think you did your job in Ghostbusters, I just slipped up and called you Phoebe. So there you go. <laughs> thank you so much. Have a, a good, pleasure. have a great, have a great day. Bye. See you later. Bye.